And good morning to those who are in Zoom. So this is the second week of adding another layer of technology, which is the television screen, so that we can share video from the choir. To be clear, we are using a, a lovely choral piece from last year's Advent season because Billy's still compiling this year's Advent songs. But um, you guys only saw it maybe once if you were lucky. So bear with us if we if it's not 100% smooth. This is another way of connecting those who are here in body and those who are with us in spirit from different places. Welcome to Jackson Community Church on this, the second week of Advent. This is the week when we focus on peace. We always begin with any announcements so that those don't disrupt the time when we gather for worship and we focus on worship. So let me run through any announcements I might have and then any that anyone else wishes to add. So I want to highlight for you all again, we have a four o'clock concert. It's a peace concert offered by the Della Valla family. They'll be playing bluegrass and it'll be the theme of peace and music is of their choice. So it will be a surprise to all of us, but it will certainly include some holiday tunes as well. They are quite a gifted group of young people. Um, the oldest of them is in high school. And she just held a piano recital for her own piano students here in our church last night. So she's accomplished enough to be teaching a new generation of pianists. And her brothers play with her uh, drums, banjo, piano, violin. And so they're all going to be playing together. And uh, last night was a treat, and tonight should be even more of a treat. So if you want to come, please do at 4 o'clock. Um, for folks like Sandy, who knows the Della Valla family well, we're going to put out a Zoom link too, and that should work, we hope, so that you can attend from a different place if, if you wish. Other announcements that anybody else has for the life of the church. Deacons, Tuesday, 7 o'clock. <clears throat> Anything else? Caroling, yes. Okay, big one, big one. We are recruiting carolers. We um, are going to carol next week for two hours on Sunday afternoon, one to three-ish. And uh, we, we've done this every year for the last four or five years. I think you did it before I was here too, but we're certainly doing it again. We have a list of households that comes from the work that we do with the Whitney Center in the town to put together care packages. And it's, it's a pretty big list. So we could use more rather than less carolers. Having the perfect voice is not what counts. It's all about your body and your presence. Um, so there's going to be a sign-up sheet in the parish house afterwards. We're gonna, we have nibbles in the parish house for after church. Please sign up if you're interested so that we can give you more details and assign you to a route for singing. Mm. I feel like and um, there's go ahead linda we need the yeah use the mic <laughs> the mic's going to linda and linda's going to the mic this afternoon or i should say this noon time right after church kind of during the coffee hour kit and i are going to be organizing the angels and elves gifts probably wrapping a half a dozen gifts and organizing what goes to what kid and we could use two people for maybe a half an hour if anybody has time. Just come see us in Fellowship Hall, please. Oh, and if you didn't get your gift in or you've got a problem with it, come see me after church too, please. Okay, so angels and elves, this is the day when they're gonna hand over all the gifts to angels and elves. So they're gonna be wrapping and collecting everything that you all took tags for. Also this afternoon, around one o'clock, anybody, I think that, I think, we had a couple of volunteers. We're going to put up our Christmas tree. We're doing, we're doing our decorating by stages. Yesterday, as most of you know, was the celebration of life for John Pepper. And we needed all the space that we could gather to fit the number of people that wish to be here to remember John. So today, we'll be adding the Christmas tree. And then over the next few weeks, we'll be adding other elements to our Christmas 
but if anybody wants to help put up a tree and decorate a tree you are more than welcome you can stay after the nibbles and help us bring it down and put it up any other announcements for the life of the church there's a dime to donate to right for the way station no there's another one there's um snow village in all right look for inform yeah look for information about a dime to donate coming up this week to benefit the way station all right that seems like plenty of business for right now let us come to a place of gathering alan will offer us his music we invite you to put your feet on the floor relax your bodies open your hands to receive the blessings of this day going to turn to our candle lighting and we're going to invite the Roberts family to come forward. And Alan, maybe if you want to just lift that out of the, and then make sure it's on after you pull it out. And it's, it's a long cord so you can pass it to me and I'll hand it to you guys. You'll find the candle lighting responsive reading in your bulletin. So if you would please turn to your bulletin so that you can follow along and participate. Today, we will break bread and sip juice together. We will celebrate a meal from 2000 years ago. There is certainty that death has no domain. For it has been overturned every time we take communi communion we receive the gift of new life and belonging that has been given to all of us. What do we have to fear? Yet yeah, we do. In Matthew's story, God's angel speaks through a dream to Joseph, Mary's betrothed. Joseph knows Mary is carrying a child and he is trying to protect her socially, but also get out of the relationship. He is an ethical man struggling with a life-changing situation. How can Joseph or any of us have peace in our relationships, our homes, our world? God reveals everything to Joseph. He wakes up filled with trust. He knows what to do. He can speak openly to Mary because God has communicated truthfully with him. He has renewed commitment and purpose to support and protect his child and the community they will transform. What do we need in order to connect with our sense of purpose? What is required to act out of deep and trusting love that honors both ourselves and others? What will set, change our hearts and minds, inspire words and deeds, and create peace in our relationships and communities? Today, may we welcome the second light of the season and let it shine within our hearts and lives. And a second week in a row, somebody got the match on the first try. We're watching the light of hope and peace. The peace one is taking its time. Watch your step. Thank you to the Roberts family for lighting the candles of hope and of peace.
and get back to you. Brothers and sisters, this is the time during the service when we turn to prayer and we come to each other with our prayers. If possible, if they are ones that we can lift up out loud, we do so, we lift them up out loud. And if they are prayers that must be held in confidence or silence, we create a moment of silence as well. We begin with prayers of concern and we move to prayers of gratitude and of hope. And so we invite you to share any prayers that you might have that are of concern. We're going to start in Zoom and work our way back to the sanctuary. So in Zoom, is there anyone who has a prayer? So please unmute yourselves and go ahead and share. I'm giving a moment. Okay, Sandy says no, I think we're okay. They're quiet and happy apparently. So here in the sanctuary, are there prayers of concern? If you have one, please raise your hand and Bob will bring you the microphone. Meg Scotland. Um, as, as usual, I'm requesting ongoing prayers for my dad, Ralph, um, who is declining rapidly at the nursing home. And um, it's been almost an eight year stint there. And, um, but this is a dramatic change and kind of hard on all of us. Ralph is 100 years old, and he celebrated his birthday in great style this year and has hit a bump that is complicated and for him. Prayers for anyone else here in the sanctuary of concern. I would like to lift up a couple of concerns that were brought to our attention or of which we're all aware. Again, we pray for those who are bereaved in this season. We pray for Alice. We pray for her living children, Brian and Sarah and their families. We pray for John's nephews and nieces and great nephews and nieces. We pray for all those who were his close friends and held him in great esteem in this community. We pray too for Anne who mourns Joanne we pray for all those who, even if the loss was not just a few weeks ago, but longer, this is a time when we hold dear and cherish our relationships. And the absence of those that we love becomes quite apparent to us. Also, I want to lift up prayers for um, John Sullivan, who did have heart surgery this week. And he's home recovering, but recovery from an, a heart surgery that's complicated is takes more patience than one would like. And um, for Irene, who loves John and is is taking care of him, but also anxious for him, and herself also has many challenges in her body. I want to lift up Birdie who fell, um, Birdie is a member of our community. She's an active volunteer. She fell and broke, fractured multiple bones. Um, and she already has some other challenges going on. So this creates layers of complexity yet again. I want to lift up Richard Hemmelwright. I want to lift up Huntley Allen, Scamp. I want to lift up Richard Augustine, Sasha and her granddaughter, Mary and Mary's heart, Jan and Barry Brodel, Arden and Ray. There are so many of us who live with loved ones that are struggling with diagnoses such as cancer. Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, ALS, so many different challenges. We lift up Brian, Alice's son, who is also dying. Anybody who was here and watched his visit and his eloquent words about his father, 
also saw him in a wheelchair with oxygen. And he is a man who has, we're going to lift him up during the sermon too, when we think about peace. We lift up those who have beloved members of their family who are not people, but pets. And we've had several families who have had to let go and say goodbye to a beloved cat or dog in particular who give comfort, our therapy, our companions, maybe the only other living creature in the household and who love us in a way that humans really can't love us. We give thanks for the presence of those lives, but we also mourn them when we can't be with them anymore. And she's here with us, and so we're going to, as we turn towards gratitude, say gratitude for Dr. Kate, who is the vet in this community, who takes care of many of our animals. I'm just waving at Kate because we thank you and others like you who are tender with those we love. And this is when we move to gratitude. And so if there's gratitude, let's start in the sanctuary and work our way back to them. And I would love to see gratitude celebration. I'd love to see some happiness here. You guys are kind of neutral today. All right, so we've got Sue and then we're gonna have on behalf of Sandra, Cindy Gilmore. They are, they are celebrating their 40th wedding anniversary. Mm. Harold and Cindy were married 40 years ago at the New England Inn during a major snowstorm. And Dr. Durst presided over their wedding. And so this is a very happy day for them. We rejoice. We honor the covenant of Doc and Cindy Gilmore. And Sandra has a prayer for us. Um, I have with me today my sister and brother-in-law who are also on their 40th anniversary today. Oh, wow. Uh, major snowstorm, <laughs> same day 40 years ago. <laughs> and uh, their daughters gave them a weekend at the Wentworth. So oh, they're wow. they're here from Concord, New Hampshire, celebrating their 40th. Tell us your first names, if you will. Joyce and, Jeremy. And Jer Joyce and Jeremy um, are here with Sandra also. Wow, so I guess it's a day for 40s. Anybody else? <laughs> um, Alan has a prayer of happiness he wants to share. Bob is migrating through the sanctuary, bringing the microphone where um, we need it. Well, first, I'd like to, uh, to thank uh, Sue Kerrigan. Uh, very, very grateful. Um, I was very nervous yesterday with all the people, um, more than I really expected. Um, and I wanted to thank you um, for your using a word that I wanted to share that I think made all the difference for me. And that was confidence. And uh, thank you for that. So I just wanted to say thanks. So for friends that pay attention when small moments become big in our lives and are present to us in the ways that we need. Last week, Bob Carver gave thanks for me um, entering his life. And this week, I want to give thanks for him coming into my life. Um, it has changed in the eight months that we have known each other, and we have so much to look forward to, and we both feel so incredibly blessed to have come together and met each other. So that's Elizabeth giving thanks for Bob and her life here in the sanctuary. All right, any other? Oh, here we go. This is Reverend James Edgerly, who's sharing with us, and he was the uh, celebrant yesterday at John's service. Yes, and I'm also celebrating the fact that my eldest daughter, Mika, is pregnant. Woo! All right. It's been a very, very long process, and he told us just like two days ago. So we're so happy about that. We, um, we take such news and hold it with great hope, and we also ask for stability and well-being of both parent and child through the journey of pregnancy, knowing that it, it's, it is its own very special journey and also challenging. And so we pray for the well-being of the new life that may come into the world and give joy to everyone 
and for Mika and for her father, who's clearly going to be very happy to be a grandfather. <laughs> Other announcements here in the life of, in the sanctuary for joy. Then let me turn to the Zoom. Anybody wanna unmute and tell us something happy? There's gotta be one person. In, oh, go ahead, Jennifer. Yay. I don't know if Sandy will say this, so I'll let her do the other part, but um, I'm excited because Wednesday I get to go to her holiday party for her work and I get to play Mrs. Claus. So I'm like super excited about it. That sounds very fun. Is there more to that story, Sandy, that you're supposed to tell us? No, it, it, we're just thankful that... Um, for family time and certain experiences, which is very cool. Um, we did a fan, we did a concert yesterday and we went to see lights at a mill yesterday. Today I go get my Christmas tree, although it won't be from Bethlehem, New Hampshire, it will still be a real tree. So I'm happy and um, looking forward to Wednesday's party where Jen will play Mrs. Claus to the designated Mr. Claus who will be there. So um, very cool. Fun. Other happinesses in Zoom that you want to pass along, anybody? I love, I see lots of smiles. You, you look at least. Yeah. Hi, it's Ginger. Oh, hey, Ginger. Um, yes, yeah, we're just happy um, that Jack and the family um, are doing well. He's going in for a checkup today. So just prayers that um, he's gaining his ounces that he needs to do that. But we're grateful that he's, he's sleeping as best a baby can. <laughs> Beautiful. Baby Jack and his ounces. We're praying for ounces on baby Jack. And Arden, did you want to share with us? Yeah, I just wanted to say uh, it was wonderful what went on in your parish house there on Friday. And that everybody that uh, that made it happen, um, I'm just really grateful to be able to get together like that. It's it's great. She's referring to a women's lunch that we had here at the parish house on Friday. Nice gathering and silly Christmas game and lots of sharing and got to know a little bit more about each other. I ask that you all now hold a moment of silence for those prayers that were not lifted up out loud. And I ask that you pray with me. Oh, holy God, we lift up this community which is bound together across great distances, maybe even across time zones, by love, by mutual respect and affection, by the desire to gather together in whatever way possible to come into your presence. We give thanks for our partner church, the Chikanga Church in the city of Mutare, in the nation of Zimbabwe. We give thanks for and ask you to hold in your attention the villages in Honduras, the places all over the world where our loved ones have taken up residence, work, school, serving, or play, and where your fingerprints and your footprints come alive through the hands and the feet, the voices and the choices of those who walk in the world and remind us that all of us together become your body, the body of Christ. We ask that you will hear our voices lifted up together. And we ask that those that are in Zoom should unmute that we may hear your voices with ours here in the sanctuary. As we say together, our Father who art in heaven, Hallelujah. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, will be done. on earth as it is in heaven. 
Forgive us as we forgive our sins. As we forgive forgive us our sins. Forgive us our sins. But deliver us from evil. For thine is for the kingdom, kingdom, power, power, and glory, and the glory forever. forever. Amen. And this would be the time in the service when you are invited to stand if you are able and turn to page 127. We're going to sing the Christmas carol, Lift Up Your Heads, O Mighty Gates, the first three verses. So please rise. And page 127. If you're in the Zoom, the words will be on the screen for you. And Alan, if you want to come forward and share with us the scripture for this morning, that would be lovely. Thank you. Yeah. Just make sure it's on. From Matthew 1, verses 18 through 25. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife. For the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus. Thank you. And now, friends, I ask that you pray with me. O oh, holy God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Last week we talked about hope, and we talked about how hope is not a fantasy, an idea without muscle, without tangibility. Hope is what you turn to when things are hard. Hope is the place where you put down your roots, where you choose your ground. You look around and you name what is happening and from there, you make a plan. 
one step at a time towards whatever is possible, accepting what may not be able to be changed, but changing anything that is possible to change if it needs to be changed. This morning at eight o'clock when we gathered, people talked about the fact that you can't begin to discuss peace unless you've connected it to hope. And indeed, there's a very tight reciprocal relationship between these two ideas. First of all, peace is not a destination. Peace is a process. Peace is a condition to which we always strive and which we must always contribute to and always refuel, rebuild, renew. You can't perhaps get to that moment of peace and assume it will linger and stay in stasis unchanged. Peace is not the absence of war or the absence of conflict. It is that place within you that is calm and serene, but it is also a focus and a purposefulness in our relationships, in our outlook, in the way that we connect with each other and conduct our lives. Indeed, peace is not dependent on external conditions when we talk about inner peace. Often, the people that you would expect to have the least amount of peace, and here is where we visit the presence of Brian, John and Alice's son, who bore witness to his father's life yesterday here in our sanctuary from his wheelchair with the assistance of his wife because he is living with ALS and it is claiming his life. And one of the things that he said yesterday that he understood so profoundly about his own father's journey through cancer was that they had to again and again and again let go of things that they loved to do. Whether it was skiing or walking. Brian is a, a wonderful, he's, he took up birding as things changed and he painted birds and his paintings are exquisite. He can no longer paint. But when I visited him a few months ago at John and Alice's house, he was teaching me about the birds, the sound of the birds, what I might learn when I went into the woods if I listened carefully. And this week when I was talking about what it's like to be a new skier, right? You guys know five years ago, I started trying to become a cross-country skier. And one of the first things that somebody taught me was smile because it'll relax all the muscles in your body. But then one of my other great teachers has been Sarah Kimball. And for people that live in this community, you know that Sarah skis in a sit ski because she too has a debilitating condition. And so although she has been an athlete so much of her life, she is an athlete in a different way now. And a couple of years ago when I was still very, very nervous about being at the top of a small hill on cross country skis. I stood there and of course, who's next to me, Sarah Kimball in her sit ski. And she told me yesterday, how ironic is it that whenever people fall down, I'm the one from my skit, sit ski telling them how to get back up because she knows how to do it. And she was the one that told me, okay, Gail, just relax, smile and then bend your knees, point your knees in a little bit, you know, get your stance right and stay, stay in that stance and just kind of relax and go down the hill and you'll be okay. And I kept thinking, if Sarah says I'm going to be okay, of course I'm going to be okay. And I went down the hill. I wasn't peaceful at the top of the hill. I was terrified about falling and breaking a bone because I'd already done it once up here and I did that tripping, tripping on a rock. So, you know, I could do it skiing. But that moment of fear was changed 
by the voice of a person who spoke from a place of authenticity, authority, and compassion. Sarah put her voice in my head as Betsy Harding put her voice in my head, as Brian put his voice in my head, whether it's about the song of a bird or how to relax at the top of a hill. And they spoke from places where they themselves might not have had peace, but they do. And they have peace because one of the things that we need to know if we're gonna have any kind of peace, inner peace, peace in our relationships, peace in this world is that there is so much about which we have no control. The one thing that we often can change is ourselves. We have control over ourselves and our response to what may be happening personally, individually, with our bodies, with our minds, in our relationships, in our community, in our world. And maybe we can't affect global peace all of a sudden because we sang the right song and everybody was inspired and they put down everything and stopped arguing. Peace is not the absence of conflict. Peace is how we approach each other and see each other as human beings, with something to say, something to offer. And we don't try to push our own agenda on someone else, but we actually start from a place of curiosity, asking questions, seeking to know another person. It's impossible to wage conflict and violence on somebody with whom you have a relationship that involves compassion. You may be really disagreeing about certain things, but you can indeed find common ground. Sit in this room together, look at each other across Zoom, share a meal, whatever it is you may be doing. Peace is not easy and peace is not constant. Peace is not eternal. Peace is a process. And sometimes we have a glimpse of what it means when we're at a place where everything is just so balanced and so right. And you can look around the table and say, wow, I have known this moment of peace because here I shared it with you. Or you can be alone in the woods or up on a mountain and in the presence of something bigger than yourself and you carry it with you from that place and it gives you that peace. It's something that we keep trying to create over and over again. And we lose ground and then we gain it. And we don't give it up because as children of God, in the season of Christmas, as we prepare for the coming of love itself, we are called to work for peace and to hold on to hope when it seems unlikely. It begins inside. And from there, it can move outward into your relationships, into your home, onto the streets and the hallways of your community, onto the ski tracks of your Nordic fields and your alpine slopes. It can be how you vote, how you choose to spend your money or where you put your time. That's a social, political kind of peace. But the peace that grows from the coming of love into the world is bigger than all of these. And we have all felt and touched some part of it. And we come back to it again and again because we long to be in its presence. And yet what we pray today is true. We are now the body of Christ. And if the presence of love is to be celebrated, we celebrate it with the remembrance of the one that came into the world, was born into the stable. But we are the ones who live it now and make it real in our hearts, our minds, and our lives. So today and for this week, know that the Prince of Peace comes to you bearing peace desires peace for you in your heart and in your mind, in your relationships and in this world. 
and will walk with you through all things, seeking it with you. Go as bearers of peace today in your hearts, in your living, and in your loving. And remember, the one who came bearing peace has given it to you to share with others. May we walk the way of peace. Thanks be to God. We share with you now the video that the choir prepared called Glow as an offering of peace. Today we gather up the gifts that are offered to angels and elves. We gather up the gift of our presence here offered to each other. We gather up what we may give into service of hope and peace and joy and love as it comes into this world. At this time, we also give thanks for the gifts that you have given over the course of COVID, you have been steadfast in your commitment to this church and this community, and we ask that you will continue to be so, said, so steadfast. There are envelopes in your pews. You can go to jxncc.org. You can leave something in the plate on your way in or out. In whatever way you are able to give and you choose to give, we give thanks for this too. Our church, as we tell you every week, is part of a network in the valley that makes a difference in the lives of people here and in other parts of the world. And we do it together, and we do it with your help. Thank you. Please rise for the doxology. It's on page 44 in your hymnal, if you need the word.
at this time, we are preparing for communion. If there's anybody that wants to partake of communion and needs a moment in Zoom, I'm speaking to you, actually, to grab a beverage or something edible. Um, communion is bigger than a bread and a cup. Communion is whatever meal you have to share between yourself and God, between yourself and others, whether you are alone and with us or you are gathered and sharing a meal. Whatever elements you have before you become sacred because we call down the love of God upon them to bless them. Here in the sanctuary, everybody should have a little tiny cup. Does everyone have that? Whoa. Okay. We're, there's always something. Normally we don't get feedback between the microphones, not sure, but there you go. God finds a way. Everybody's got a cup, yes? All right. Brothers and sisters, please join me in the prayer of confession that you'll find in your bulletin or up on the screen in Zoom. Oh, holy God, you have shared your light with us. Yet you return again and again in the celebration of the Christmas season, in the remembrance of your sacrifice, and in the telling of the stories old and new that reach us how love transforms the world and that teach us. Today, we reach for your light. We ask you to illuminate within us your inspiration, resilience, and compassion. Give us your peace. Fill us with your light. Change us with your love. Brothers and sisters, we come to this place where we gather and all are welcome here. This table is not set by me. It is not set by the deacons of this church. It is not set by some person in this town. This table is prepared by God. And God has invited all people to this table. There is no right or wrong way to come to this table. There is only to come. To come and sit if you choose to partake, but to be in the presence of love and to let love change you. By coming to this table and coming into the presence of love, we have already been changed. We have been forgiven, called beloved, and claimed as the children of God, as the bearers of life, as the builders of peace. This is how you come to the table, simply by being here today. I call down now the blessings of God and I ask you to pray with me. Oh, holy God, may your transforming love, your deep, an abiding peace, your way of hope be made available to us through the elements that we have brought to the table here in the sanctuary, the bread and the juice, in other places, a cup of coffee and a donut, it does not matter. It is our lives, our hearts, our minds that are changed and we ask that you will be here and be with us loving us as we are, and for who we may become. Amen. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the God most high. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places 
Give thanks unto you, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. Brothers and sisters, if you have a little tiny cup here in the sanctuary and you peel back the very top plastic layer, you'll find a tiny round wafer of bread. I invite you to open that, and if you're at home, partake of whatever element symbolizes bread this morning. On the night that Christ gathered with those that he loved and trusted most in the world, he was the Prince of Peace already. And before he fed his own body, he cared for the bodies of those he loved. He washed the dust and the dirt of the street from their feet. He knelt before them with a warm cloth and his hands and his love. And he gave them the gift of his care. He touched them tenderly, reverently, trustingly. He chose to be with them at the very ending of his life and to share that time with them. And then he took the bread and he broke it. And he said, every time you gather, in the presence of love, whether it's a cup of coffee or a donut or a bowl of soup, or there's nothing in your hands, but you are in the presence of love. When you hold what is broken in your hands, think of me, remember me, and know that I was broken open that love would pour out for you and that in the breaking I am made new and you are made new and that our lives are broken open again and again so that love may indeed change us and allow us to change each other. When you take and you eat of the bread, do so in remembrance of the one whose life was broken open for you take and eat. the same way remember that what was poured into the cup and shared among the followers and the friends of Christ was not just the fruit of the vine but all the time that had been spent together the story shared the lessons learned the bitterness and the hurt the healing and the laughter that when they tasted of the fruit of the vine. They tasted of the time they had shared with a love that overturned everything they expected or knew. When we partake of this cup, it is again that love that was poured out. It is time, hope, energy, belief, connection, spilled across the world to unite us 
that we may open our lives and share our own bounty and abundance and gratitude and capacity with others. When you take and when you drink, do what was asked of you by Christ at the table. Remember, remember where the story began. Take and drink. noticed it, I was going to try to make it. We turn in thanksgiving now to the responsive reading in the bulletin. We are not alone. God made us. Can anything separate us from the love of Christ? No. In all these things, we win an overwhelming victory through the one whose love for us has been proven. Neither death nor life, neither messenger of heaven nor ruler on earth, neither what happens today nor what may happen tomorrow, neither power from on high nor power from below, nor anything else has power to separate us from the love of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Please rise if you're able for It Came Upon a Midnight Clear. We're going to sing verses 1, 2, and 4. So you'll find the words on the screen if you're in Zoom, and otherwise they're in your bulletin.
Brothers and sisters, today of all days, go bearing peace in your hearts. Go in peace. Mm -hmm. 